we're going through this cycle of higher rates and funding winter and so on, we've got, of course, early stage companies sort of insulated. That's a traditional belief. But the longer this thing goes on, because that insulation further away from potential exits, it's not really benefiting them anymore. That's what some say. What are you seeing on the ground? I completely agree with you. I think this whole idea that any part of the tech ecosystem isn't impacted by other parts really doesn't make sense. And what we're seeing in early stage startups is much more discipline on growth and profitable growth. I think gone are the days of 2020 and 2021 when it was really growth at all costs, burn as much cash because you could just raise more cash. Yeah. And even the early stage entrepreneurs, what we're seeing is that the conversation is much more about profitability, unit economics. And that's the conversation that we should always be having because we want to invest in back sustainable companies. So I think the shift in tone of in the conversation the past year and a half is actually really positive for the tech markets. What about startup M&A scene outlook? Can I get a line on that? Because I think it was actually one of your guys who was talking about, you know, B Capital getting involved in this process, really encouraging your portfolio companies to uh, go find M&A opportunities. How do you get involved in a process like that? And is this something that's going to continue for a while? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I think what you've seen over the past year, year and a half, has been that the corporates have really been sitting on the sidelines. What they've been really waiting for is to see companies' valuations um, really come back to a more reasonable valuation. We are slowly starting to see some big corporates starting to re-enter the M&A market. Um, we just had a cybersecurity company in our portfolio that, um, that we were able to match up with a large cybersecurity company that's acquiring them. Um, and I think you're going to see more of that. For B Capital, our entire focus is really on driving returns for our investors, and we think corporate M&A. In addition to the IPO window, which I know we're all talking about it reopening, but it reopens very slowly. And while you might see a crack in the IPO window in 2023, our belief is that it'll be 2024, 2025 until it really fully reopens. So corporate M&A is a great option for a lot of companies. And staying on reopening and talking about returns for your investors, what about IPO market? Because it's been really just really quiet, eerily quiet. And then things are coming back a little bit. It looks like Instacart and and arm holdings. Uh, how is your exit environment? Yeah, so the exit environment has really been at a standstill for about a year, year and a half. There was no IPOs happening, and the only IPOs that happened were companies that were really kind of forced into the public markets, and they didn't get received very well. Not very surprising. I think what you're seeing with Instacart, Arm, some of the other companies that have confidentially filed is very high quality companies that are actually going to go out at a more reasonable valuation. And that's fine for us as investors. We're not worried about the IPO price on the day of IPO. We're worried about it 6, 12, 18 months in because, of course, our shares are locked up. And what we want to see is healthy IPOs where the IPOs trade up in 6, 12, 18 months.